Hello, I'm Steve. Welcome to the Patio Heat channel where we create visual concepts of infrared heating as well as tips for outdoor comfort. Our one-on-one -on -one customer support helps you make the best decisions for your applications. We strive to earn your business. Visit our patioheat.com website for sales and more information. Now let's get heating. All right, so this is going to be a new construction over uh, covered patio section. And then there's basically a bar area here with a countertop in the back here. Um, I'd say a prep area for cooking and, and whatnot over here. Um, let's go ahead and look at the overall dimensions. So overall dimensions I have here at 21 feet 1 inch from this edge here to the inside edge here. I have a distance of about 7 feet to the first part of the countertop here bar area and then 5 feet to the um, end here an additional 5 feet to this end over here from here to over here. And then you can see the countertop I have here at uh, 14 feet 6 inches from this edge to this edge. I have a total uh, installation height or uh, ceiling height of 8 foot 10 inches and I think that is about it. Um, countertop area 3 foot 6 to the top and then 3 foot 1 to the top of the counter area over here. I think that's it. Um, okay let's go ahead and look at uh, some possibilities. So this section here there's going to be two different methods but number one I'm not sure about the construction of the ceiling over here so we're going to go with this um, uh, area first or this uh, recommendation first. So what these are are uh, slimline. They could either be 3,000 watt units or 4,000 watt units. If you can use a 4,000 watt unit you'd want to use a control system on it. However um, 3,000 watt units is, are, is basically perfect for uh, bar stool area height uh, with this installation height. So um, or seating I should say. Um, let's go ahead and well what I've done here is I've taken the center of the um, bar here and then I've moved one heater from the center of the heater to um, the right three feet and then from the center here to the left three feet so six feet center to center on the heater now the manufacturer will state that they recommend a three foot gap between the two uh, units however I was trying to um, uh, utilize as much heat output that I can with regards to um, the overlapping rays. So um, that's not a code, but it is a recommendation from the manufacturer to keep this at three foot distance center uh, uh, apart from each other. This uh, unit over here, I actually um, from the center, I moved it two feet over to the right. So center of the bar, two foot over to the right to the center of the heater itself. So it's not quite um, centered within this span here, but because of the fact that we have this uh, uh, gate back here or um, wall section here um, that curves right around there, I figured it's going to be more utilized over here on the right than it would be centered within the space. So. Um, and I also think there's gonna be a barbecue back over here. So anyways, um, th this is the footprint that I'm looking at at first. And um, also this is mentioned that from the lamp um, shades themselves, I've gone from this edge here to the edge of the heater at 18 inches. That way we're meeting all clearances to combustibles. And I didn't see anything with regards to um, anything in the ceiling with regards to this heater back here. So. Let's go ahead and look at those clearances real quick. On the below side here, we got 18 inches of clearance on all four sides, 36 inches down. So we're meeting all clearances that way. On top, the OEM brackets, the heaters are pointed straight down. So um, with the OEM brackets, we're maintaining that six inches of clearance above the heaters on all three heaters. And then let's go ahead and look at the footprint of heat. And footprint of heat we have with the uh, three units. We have really good um, uh, coverage here throughout this whole span. We're almost getting the whole seven foot. Obviously, if you're standing right here, you're not going to be in that ray. But um, what I really want you to see is, you know, standing underneath the 3,000 watt unit, you're very close to the heater. That's why we're recommending a 3,000 watt unit above anything else as far as outputs. I mean, a 4,000 watt unit would be awfully hot standing underneath it and even a 3000 watt unit might be too much for some people so this fig this uh, figure here is about a six foot one figure so um, even sitting at a bar stool height you're closer to the heater as uh, you would be if you were sitting in just a casual like couch or something of that nature so but yeah we we're getting a very good coverage and I think that would be a really good application here 
All right, so the next thing would be is what if we were to flush mount the units? This is just a image um, that I've captured here. Same, uh, it did everything the same, except you won't see the building or structure over here. But anyways, everything is the same as far as the dimensions are concerned. And what I did here is um, from this opening or from this edge here to the uh, edge here, I centered uh, two of the um, flush mount 3000 watt. These are WD 3024. I think they're 33 inches in length, so a little bit smaller, low, lower in profile, and they're flush mounted into the ceiling. Now, I'm not quite sure again what the ceiling construction is like, so I have no idea if this would even work. Um, however, you do need the flush mount kit, you need the heater, and you need to install your own uh, one hour fire rated um, drywall uh, within the ceiling. So depending on what the structure is like, um, this may or may not work. Um, also, I think we have this at about, I don't want to guess here, but I think five feet, so seven feet center to center on the units themselves, and then that seven foot, sorry, that seven foot would be centered within the span here. So from here to the center of the heater, that would be three and a half feet, and then from the center of the bar, left three and a half feet up would be the uh, center of the heater on this side here. Also, this one here, I'm just mat matching the profile of these two here. And um, let me take that off here. Um, you could go uh, perpendicular to the other two units to get a better footprint. And um, with that being said, let's see if I can get this right. My mouse is acting up a little bit here, so I apologize. Uh, but in any case, uh, I have it basically centered within the span here. But if you wanted to center it, I would just center it within that same, um, maybe a foot off to the right here, the center of the bar, if you're going parallel with the bar on this unit here. So let's go ahead and look at the footprint. One other thing I want to mention, I'm not quite sure what the ceiling is going to be made of. If this is a um, combustible surface made out of wood, then um, you, know, you just want to make sure you meet all the clearances to combustibles with regards to the finish. Uh, that means that the heater itself would have to be at the elevation of the finished uh, ceiling. So let's say that this is a tongue and groove or something wooden surface. This heater needs to be dropped down to that. Now if it's stucco, it could be at the same elevation as the stucco itself. But um, the other thing I don't know about if it's a uh, some sort of uh, ABS or something of that nature. I'm not quite sure how that would actually function within that um, ceiling like that. So um, don't have enough experience with that part of it. So in any case, this is the uh, three three thousand watt uh, CD models or excuse me WD models flush mount. Let's look at the footprint of heat. Footprint of heat is really good too. And, you know, we're not capturing the bar as much as we'd like to. Maybe it'd be a better idea to just move these two over to the right here, maybe 12 inches. And, uh, yeah, you'd see that this is a little bit better of a footprint of heat. But, again, uh, bar still sitting height. You don't want to put something that's too hot here because you're just not going to be comfortable. And even 3,000-watt units that are w, uh, WD models, two elements, you may want a control system on this as well. So, all right, well, I hope this has helped. If you're looking for some assistance with your outdoor heating application and you'd like us to review your plans, please send your information into designs at patioheat.com. I'm Steve. Please tap that like button if you find this video useful. We don't advertise, we're not monetized. YouTube does not promote us in any way unless we receive a thumbs up from our viewers. We thank you so much. Have a great day.